filter out what he wants. Tell him just he raised like the first ten minutes. What'd you say? I'd say Rodman Charlesworth. Um, how, do, how do I spell your name? It's R O D M A N C H A R L E S W O R T H. What's your title? Um, like, what's your role here today? I'm a launcher section chief for the Mike 142 HIMARS. Uh, we have the reduced range practice rockets out here, and essentially all that is is a telephone pole with a rocket motor on it. Um, I mean, it's good for us out here to be able to simulate that type of training, to be able to actively apply what we're learning because it's it, we don't get to fire the rockets that often especially since I mean they're co they cost tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars so I mean in terms of how powerful these ones are going to be it's definitely going to be pretty significant even from back here I think the difference for us normally we we've taken these to the desert um, this is a, re a very it's a new weapon system for us it's only been with us actively for about four or five years now. Um, being here, like the ground here is definitely rough. I've never had to work with or worry about termite mounds or anything like that. And I know some of the other units out here have discovered that those are uh, a lot harder than they look. Our max range is 300,000. So opposed to traditional artillery, we can fire 10 times as far. Pretty much what I'm doing inside the launcher is just verifying that everything that happens within that launcher is safe. And also ensuring that I'm providing timely and accurate fire. Accuracy is within about 10 meters. So it's definitely, it's a lot more accurate than traditional 777, um, where we kind of adjust on target. They're not as accurate. They don't have any GPS capabilities or anything like that. But as far as simulating the actual uh, firing of the weapon system, it's a lot cheaper for the Marine Corps to attain those. And I mean, honestly, with some of these rounds costing like, you know, up into hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands of dollars, this is a cost efficient way for us to be able to realistically train. Um, especially out here in Australia, this is a very good area for us to practice in. It's new terrain for us. Um, we're testing this the launcher's capabilities while here, seeing how rugged it is. I know while some of the other units here have had problems with popping tires, all that stuff, luckily our launchers have been holding up. And I mean, they're definitely withstanding the test. Let's see, we started 
our wash racks, just trying to get the launcher clean enough to pass for customs. And that, I've never cleaned a vehicle like I cleaned during that. So cleaning it is about two weeks. Um, getting it over to a base and preparing it for everything, getting it on the bird and getting it over here, you're looking at about, like a month is a very minimal amount of prep time. Yeah, I mean, they, like I said, they're just here for us to be able to simulate realistic training because a lot of times we have, uh, we have trainers that allow us to simulate w like one series, one type of weapon because we have multiple different uh, rockets with this weapon system. So it lets us, it lets us realistically, kind, somewhat realistically train and deal with misfires, deal with the different weapon systems, the problems that we have, and then also just building a familiar familiarity with it. The, the big thing that I've noticed here is like, especially the termite mound, stuff that we're not used to, stuff that I'm not used to seeing. And luckily we haven't had to learn the hard way, but others have, and I mean, it's good training here. I'm Colby Sutton with 5th Battalion, 11th Marines, uh, Quebec Better, 2nd Platoon. And uh, out here we are obviously shooting, shooting rockets for, uh, for the first time in Australia. And here we, uh, we're the FTC, so we process the missions, receive them from higher, and get the, the rockets downrange in a nutshell.